Good evening, everyone. It is now 6.30 p.m. I'd like to call the regular Cultural Heritage Commission meeting of July 20th, 2023 to order. Before I proceed, I would like to take a moment to go over our meeting protocols for today. The South Pasadena Cultural Heritage Commission meeting for July 20th, 2023 will be conducted in person to maximize public safety while still maintaining transparency and public access. Members of the public can observe the meeting via Zoom. At this time, I will ask staff to please take the roll. Commissioner Cross. Commissioner Morish. Commissioner Lopez. I'm, I'm sorry, Here. Vice Chair Lopez. My apologies. Here. Commissioner Ding. Here. And Chair Gallatin. Here. You have quorum. Thank you. Next, we move on to the approval of the agenda. Commissioners, do you have any requests for additions or revisions to the agenda? If so, could you please raise your hand? All right, seeing none, I'd like a vote of the commission to proceed with approval of the agenda as submitted. Okay, we have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Next up is disclosure by commissioners of site visits and ex parte contact for items on tonight's agenda. I'll begin with Commissioner Cross. I just did drive bys and took photographs of the front elevation, of uh, the items on the agenda, and that's it. All right, thank you. Commissioner Ding. Nothing to report. Thank you. Commissioner Morish. Nothing to report. Vice Chair Lopez. Nothing to report. And I also have nothing to report. So now is the time for public comment on general non-agenda items. Uh, again, this is public comment on general items that are not on tonight's agenda. Staff, have we received any public comment requests either in person or via Zoom? We have not received public comment in chambers and guests on Zoom. Please click the hand icon to make a public comment. And we do not have public comments via Zoom. All right, very good. We'll move on then to our consent calendar items. Items listed under the consent calendar are considered by the Cultural Heritage Commission to be routine in nature and are enacted by one motion unless a public comment has been received or a commissioner requests otherwise, in which case the item will be removed for separate consideration. We have one item on tonight's consent calendar, and that is uh, the minutes from our regular meeting of December 15th, 2022. Uh, and we would be looking for a motion. Uh, well, let me first ask, does anyone have any corrections um, to that set of minutes? All right, seeing none, then I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I'll move to uh, approve the minutes okay. for the meeting on December 15th, 2022. All right, motion by Commissioner Ding. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Lopez. All in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed? Say nay. Our, oh, okay. Um, it, it's it's okay to vote yes as long as you believe they're okay. Yeah. It's what Diana Mamou told me when I was on public oh, commission. Okay. You can have seen also. But That's they, true. Yeah. So, Chris, did you want to change your vote? You still want to uh, vote in favor, or you, do you wish to abstain? Okay. All right. So let the record show then that the minutes passed uh, by a vote of four to zero with one abstention. Okay. We have one item that was continued. Um, this is 1716 Wayne Avenue, project number 2481-COA. And this item was continued from our regularly scheduled June 15th, 2023 meeting. And um, Staff, uh, Braulio Madrid, I believe, has a recommendation for this item. Thank you, Chair. That is correct. Uh, staff will be recommending that we continue the item to an unspecified date. Uh, noticing will be required once again to allow the applicant sufficient time uh, to address the comments of the subcommittee from our last meeting. Thank you. Okay, very good. So uh, as Braulio has just pointed out, uh, the recommendation is to continue this to a uh, future date. And so therefore, we will need a motion to do that. If someone would like to make that motion. Um, I'll, I'll make the motion. Uh, I'll motion to continue the hearing for 1716 Wayne Avenue uh, to a future date uh, to be determined, which will require um, new noticing to go out. 
Second. Okay. So staff, could you please take the roll call? Commissioner Cross. Commissioner Morish. Vice Chair Lopez. Yes. Commissioner Ding. Yes. Chair Gallatin. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We've now come to the point in this evening's agenda for our public hearings. And we have two public hearings tonight. The first one is at 1808 Diamond Avenue. It's project number 2449-COA. It's a certificate of appropriateness for a 1,395 square foot two-story addition with a 380 square foot rear balcony to an existing 1,229 square foot one-story single family home with a two-car garage. Um, and again, we have uh, Braulio Madrid to present our staff report. Thank you for that introduction, Chair. As mentioned by the chair, uh, the address uh, is located at 1808 Diamond Avenue. Um, thank you all again for uh, joining us in tonight's meeting. The subject site is located on the east side of Diamond Avenue between Spruce Street and Pine Street. Here we, you can see an aerial of the location. The property is a rectangular lot that measures 7,518 square feet and is developed with a single family home that measures a total of 1,229 square feet. The zoning for the property is low density, also known as RS. The property is also listed in the inventory list of historic resources. However, it is not part of any designated historic district. The home was constructed as a one-story home in 1921 and was designed with a colonial revival influence. The project proposes a two-story addition that measures 1,395 square feet in total. The 756 square foot first floor expansion will consist of adding an additional bedroom, relocating an existing bedroom, and the expansion of a living room with access to the second story. The first floor will also include a 217 square foot rear porch under the balcony footprint and other relevant interior remodels. The 639 square foot second story addition will accommodate a new primary bedroom with a private walk-in closet and bathroom. Additionally, the second floor will also include a new office and a 380 square foot balcony facing the rear. Here we have a site plan that combines the existing and the proposed. You'll be able to identify the addition by uh, the hatch marks. Here we have the existing floor plan, as well as identifying the demolition part. The project proposes to demolition an unpermitted sunroof uh, in the red box, you can identify the walls proposed to be removed. Here we have a proposed and existing first floor with a zoomed in picture of the proposed addition. As mentioned before, two, red room, two bedrooms will be reconfigurated and an expansion of the existing living room. The other interior improvements will include adding a um, washer and dryer area. And here we have the proposed second floor. After access from the staircase, you'll be able to see the office located on the top left side and the primary bedroom located towards the right side of the addition. Here we have the front elevation, also known as the west elevation. As seen with the uh, new addition on the second story, the roofing that is proposed uh, also matches the form of the existing uh, single family residence. Uh, and they will be differentiating the existing uh, exterior siding uh, by uh, creating a stucco exterior on the second floor. 
Here we have the east elevation, also known uh, as the rear in this case. As a quick correction, the plants identify the east elevation as a side yard elevation. However, it is a rear elevation. Uh, this will be corrected as part of the submittals for plan check. And here we have the north elevation, which is also a side yard elevation. Uh, through this view, you'll be able to identify the balcony proposed on the second floor, as well as the two bedrooms on the first floor and the additional bedroom on the top floor. And the last elevation we'll be looking at is the south elevation, which is also a side yard elevation. To the top left is the existing, while the proposed can be identified at the bottom. The balcony as well as the porch will have consistent materials for the uh, railings. Um, as well as the addition on the first and second floor will be consistent with each other in differentiating with the exterior stucco. Here we have the proposed roof plan. Um, as the proposed addition will be seen in the hatch pattern, uh, the existing roof line actually has a very interesting configuration. Um, however, the applicants have been able to simplify the addition and still be able to mimic uh, the existing the existing roof patterns. The building materials, finishes, and detailing are compatible with the existing historic architecture design of the subject residence. Here we have the material board for the proposed addition. The new addition will incorporate roof tile roofing to match the existing home, stucco to differentiate from the existing versus proposed, and wood doors and windows with wood railings. Please note that on the submitted plans, the stucco is incorrectly labeled as eight inch cement siding. This change of material was made at the request of the applicant. However, the description was not updated properly. The addition as proposed is appropriate to the size massing and design context of the historic residence and the surrounding area. The project meets all applicable development standards for RS zones and non-conforming lots under 10,000 square feet. The following table lists the project conformance with applicable development standards. And finally, the design guidelines for altering and adding uh, to historic residences. Um, we have selected here three design guidelines that have been met uh, by the project, although more listed in the staff report here are three uh, very important uh, design guidelines that include making sure that the massing is compatible with the existing, that the, any additions to historic homes are placed as a secondary towards the back um, and allow the primary front of the building to remain untouched, stepping the height away from the street. That concludes staff's presentation. Staff will recommend for the Cultural Heritage Commission to find the project exempt with, uh, from the California Environmental Quality Act from section 15301 and 15331 of the CEQA guidelines and approve the project uh, for the certification of appropriateness subject to the recommended conditions of approval. Staff is here to answer any questions and we also have the applicant uh, via Zoom uh, available to answer any questions. They have not provided us with any reports or presentations. Thank Th you. Thank you, Braulio. Uh, before I ask for questions from my fellow commissioners, I just wanted to clarify that I heard you correctly uh, when you made the comment about the proposed stucco material. Did, did I understand you to say that the representation in our packet that it was a, um, well, I'll use the brand name, Hardy Board, uh, material was inaccurate, that it is actually stucco and not uh, a cementitious siding? That's correct. Originally, staff had guided the applicant to use the uh, differentiation of the thickness of the board, mm -hmm. um, but my understanding is that due to cost, the applicant changed mm -hmm. uh, their decision about the exterior materials. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, so uh, we'll now ask uh, if anyone has questions of staff, and I think I'll start with Jeremy. Uh, none at this time. Okay. Um, Vice Chair Lopez. Can I look at the photos again the, of the existing? 
laptop, sorry. I, I was looking at my packet, but I can't find them. I'm sure they're here, I just can't find them. Oh. Okay. So the existing has, uh, the existing has uh, uh, wood siding, is that correct? Gotcha, okay. And, and their existing wood windows, they're not gonna be changed? Correct, so the applicant will be, sorry, let me reference the, the, the existing windows towards the front of the property that uh, are proposing no modifications. However, the windows that are currently at the rear, which will be part of the demolition sure. will be yeah, okay. removed. Thank you. That's no problem. Commissioner Cross, any questions of staff? Okay, and Commissioner Morish. Okay, uh, I have a few, um, which I'm gonna lump under the heading of questions slash concerns. And please bear with me, Braulio, because uh, some of these may be repetitive as I go through the staff report. Uh, but uh, starting with page four in the paragraph on design review project design elements, uh, it states that the addition does not alter the original style of the home. Um, I'm not sure that I agree with that statement, given the use of a completely different style of roof on the addition. Do you care to elaborate on what led you to conclude uh, that statement that uh, the addition doesn't alter the original style of the home? Um, yes, uh, when we are looking at roofing materials, um, we do allow the applicants to provide a differentiation between the existing and proposed. Uh, sometimes the applicant will choose a different type of roofing material, um, and in, in which case for staff, what we're looking for then is the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And does it match aesthetically what is existing, uh, even if there's a slight differentiation, which is uh, what the applicant is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and it's my understanding that the material, the actual roofing material is the same as the existing. Uh, I was referring to the roof form. Uh, the addition has a hipped roof. And the, as you pointed out, the existing house is a very unusual combination of um, flat roofing. And I don't know if the proper term would be mansards. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's what I was getting at when I made that observation. Yes, absolutely. and. Um... I think if, if there's a, a specific suggestion that we're looking for, I don't mm -hmm. I don't believe that it was appropriate to mimic the existing roof on the second story. I think it would have complicated the the structure a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that the applicant was able to come up with as much as close as possible to mimic mm -hmm. the existing roof line without necessarily having to replicate it. Okay. Um, further down on page four, under South Pasadena design guidelines for historic properties. It states additions or alterations are encouraged to be compatible with these historic features. Um, can you enlighten me how the height, massing, scale, and materials of this addition, um, to say nothing of the very, very large balcony, are compatible with the historic character of the home? Well, I'm so sorry, and I want to make sure I understand your mm -hmm. question correctly. So you're asking how um, staff can find a one-story home to be proposed as a two-story home and remain consistent? Is that well, correct? that's that's part of it. Um, I guess what was hanging me up uh, in part was the fact that, um, and of course, we've had a number of one-story homes with proposed two-story additions. That's correct. not unusual. In this case, though, the addition is larger than the existing house uh, itself, and uh, it is basically just a rectangular mass uh, attached onto the back of the existing house. Uh, I, I'm going to have some comments in a minute here about my thoughts about whether it is subordinate to the existing house. And so, again, um, I, I'm kind of looking for a little more depth from your thinking of how you feel that complies with that design guideline. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, in my review of the project, uh, the primary focus in the in the initial preliminary review is seeing how the existing building would be affected. Uh, once we took that into consideration, we looked at how the addition was going to match the existing home. Now, I, I do recognize that maybe with the siding board, you might have been able to see a little bit more compatibility. But in regards to the massing and size, I think that a lot of it is... Um, perceived as, as a large massing because of the balcony. Mm. Um, however, nothing in our design guidelines would prohibit the style of home from being able to have it. And ultimately, uh, as staff, what we try to do is to try to get as close as possible by, to the applicant's request by providing recommendations, but we do not di dictate the, the design of the project. Understand. Uh, still on page four is my last comment on page four. There's a sen sentence near the bottom there that uh, with the second, uh, it describes the second story addition as tucked behind the roof line of the original roof structure. Can you explain to me how it is tucked behind the roof line of the existing house? It appears from the elevation drawings that it towers over it by about 10 feet. Um, and furthermore, when you look at the side elevations, there appears to be absolutely no transition between the existing house and the proposed addition. So I'm a bit confused by the, the term tucked behind. And I do apologize that the appropriate term would be placed behind. Uh, it was referring to the location of where the addition was, was being located, uh, not necessarily the visibility of, okay. of the addition. All right, fair enough, thank you. Uh, okay, so I, I mentioned subordination. Uh, again, beginning on page five, uh, it states that the proposed addition has been designed to be subordinate. And again, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss to understand how one can make that statement um, in, the, in the current design, where again, and I understand this is a two-dimensional plan that we're looking at. We don't have, a, we don't require a um, sightline study. Uh, oh, I think that that is required. It is. Yes. Yeah. I when I present my drawings, my, my projects, I do a sideline study. Mm. I, I think it's part of the packet. It should be part of the packet. I did a section with the person sitting on the other side of the street mm. and with a line showing, which would help us figure this out. And the 3D also should be, but we've been talking about that for, for a while now. Yeah. I believe you're referencing the 45 degree requirement from the street, correct? Yeah, okay. that yes. and, and and you can turn that into a a, a vision. Uh, study by actually putting a, a, a human scale and, mm. and lines to see what they actually see from the other side of the street mm -hmm. or stuff like that. I, I do that, so I'm not sure why that's not required. If it is if it's not required, I thought it was. <laughs> Thank you, it's been noted. Um, in this case, uh, the front yard is above the required front yard setback. We noticed that the addition, the primary home in the front was- In the back pretty significant yeah. and so we try to limit how many corrections we give but if it's something that you would like to see that's something that can be added as ultimately the final. i think it's not helping the the yes. the applicant not to show me that and and it, I, because the two-dimensional yeah. drawing uh -huh. i'm agreeing with you a hundred percent looks worse than i think it is yeah but because i don't see that i cannot make that determination which is why i think that's what i i do it I thought it was a requirement. If it's not, it should be. And I and is that 3D should should also be a requirement every time there's a second story addition. Those and we've talked about this for a while now. So that's it. And and I would <laughs> I would just add to what Vice Chair Lopez just said uh, about the utility and the value of a 3D model because I have seen been on this commission now for six gosh seven years. And um, I have seen a couple of projects where they provided at staff's request a sightline study, just like he described, with a yep. human scale figure across the street and you know uh, a line, an angle projecting out from basically their eye level. Uh, and then when the, the project was built, um, I was disappointed because it didn't uh, it didn't sit as low as it appeared to sit in the sightline study. So I think the fact when you're dealing in two dimensions, yes. you're handicapped um, as, a, as opposed to a 3D model in getting a really true sense of how much is that 
new two-story mass subordinated to the original home. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll make sure to talk with the, our management team to see how we can implement those recommendations. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Mike. Oh no, I no, no, I appreciate it. There. No, Sorry. that, that <laughs> helped. Um, and, and so, uh, lastly, uh, you mentioned the applicants here, is there designers present either here or on zoom? Let me verify one. Okay. Exactly. Which one? Uh, no. I, so what, no. that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes, we do have the designer uh, okay. online as well. Very hello. Good. Yes, hello, sir. I can. Hi, uh, how are you guys? We're doing great. Thank you. And we appreciate you being here tonight um, to join us and to be able to answer any questions that the commission might have. Of we course. Just got we just got through uh, raking Braulio over the hot coals with a lot of I, questions. I'm listening, yeah. From the commission. <laughs> um, so you, you've heard what some of our concerns are. Uh, I understand you do not have a presentation to share with us tonight. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So at this point uh, is where we typically ask the commission if they have any questions of the applicant and or their designers. So... Uh, I'll, I'll start on the left this time with Commissioner Cross. I have uh, the same concerns that have been expressed by the chair uh, and the appearance of that uh, large volume behind the existing house. And what is your thought when you look at the plan is, I guess, my question. And did you consider other approaches to getting the uh, desired square footage, but tr in a different manner. So our, our main thing was um, owners came out to us and said, hey, we need X, Y, and Z. And that's kind of what we designed, just kind of based off of uh, what the city of South Pasadena allows, kind of uh, verifying lot coverage, um, ratio floor area, all that stuff and everything we designed, at least when, when I designed it, it falls under that category. Like every, nothing seems to be over the lot coverage, over uh, floor area ratio, two story is allowed. Um, so that's kind of uh, what we just based off uh, our design work on. So that was about, and we gave everything the owner was looking for. So that was our approach to this. So we weren't, really kind of uh, Ms. Uh, Braulio kind of gave us some guidelines on how to how to comply with the historical zone. And that's how um, we approached this project. Um, we made all the recommendations Braulio um, gave us and that's how we kind of landed on this design. Um, this is yet another commissioner. Um, I, I, we can see that you comply with all of the development standards to the, to the max almost. Um, the, the catch is with this house, you have some other standards that are Secretary of Interior standards. Um, the, most, the biggest one that we're struggling with is there is something that says new additions shall be compatible in mass and scale and should be visual, visually, visually subordinate to the original building. And in fact, the addition is larger than the um, original building. So I think that kind of summarizes where we're all coming from. Um, maybe you can talk to, well, do you want to ask some specific questions? Well, I have, yes, I have, but right. it's not my turn. <laughs> so Chris, did you have, okay. Uh, now I will turn to Vice Chair Lopez. Hi, Mr. Rojas. Uh, uh, Hello. So I got a couple of questions for you. What, what is the ceiling height in the existing house? Eight feet. Eight in feet? The existing, yeah, correct. Because it's, it's a one story, it's eight feet. What is the ceiling height, ceiling height on, the, on the first floor of the new addition? Eight feet. Eight feet. And the ceiling height for the second floor is nine feet. Correct. Gotcha. Uh, 
the railing is is wood railing you describe here for the balcony and the um the porch the first floor porch right outside of the um the family room or uh, yeah uh, first uh, first floor and second floors correct wood railing uh is there a detail of those ra of that railing um i sent uh Mr. Braulio, a, an updated one, and it appears the ones you guys have, because uh, I kind of, I can barely see off the Zoom meeting, like the TV screen, yeah. but um, it kind of, I don't think you guys have the updated ones, because yeah, we, even we on- were We were provided a um, photographic illustration or representation of the proposed railing, but you'll have to tell me uh, whether that's accurate. Where is that? Oh, I'm trying to find it now. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, there. Okay. So, so can you describe that? Describe can, it. Sorry, in, can you describe the railing, uh, the size of the members, uh, wood or vinyl, that kind of stuff? I don't have those specific details at the moment. Um, it was just kind of the general idea is just to match the photograph kind of thing um, with post and the smaller members in between, no more than four inches apart, railing at 42 inches height and everything. Yeah, those, those, that's, yes. that, we know that's the code. So we, we expect those. So for, uh, for next time, we need that detail in the drawings for the approval. Specific details for the wood railings, right? Yes. Okay. Any elements that are visual and have, yeah, we need to see those details. And Sounds and the good. roofing, the existing roofing is a wood, wood roof, is a wood shingles? Correct, yes. And the new is going to have wood shingles also? Same, yes, to match. And then the, the existing siding is wood siding and then it's going to remain and, and you're proposing plaster for the addition? Stucco, yes, yes. Okay. That's all, I, that's all the questions I have. Uh, Mr. Rojas, before we turn to Commissioner Ding, I just had a clarifying question. You yes. just described the roofing material as shingles, wood shingles. And in our packet- it Sorry, that it's sorry, tiles. roof, yeah, roof tiles to match, sorry. Okay, very good, yes. thank you. So roof tiles, concrete, uh, uh, what's the material? What is the existing, give me one second. Let me open them up on my end because I do have the the actual specs. They they look like they're concrete or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I believe I believe they were, and they were to essentially match the um, to come as close. Obviously, we're not going to match the exact. Um, well, the the exactly it's not gonna yeah. match yeah. the existing ones are wood. So I mean, there's no matching there. I mean, they might look similar, but there's no matching. I believe it was concrete. Yeah, they, they, that's what this image looks like. Yeah, I believe, okay. yes. All right, Commissioner Dang. Um, I have a feeling that you'll probably address most of the questions that I have. So uh -huh. if there's any additional, I'll go after you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Rojas, um, again, thank you for taking the time and bearing with us through our questions. Um, Basically, I'm going to focus on the four elevations, four proposed elevations, and make some commentary on uh, most of them. Well, really, actually, only on the two side elevations. But before I do that, uh, you started off the conversation by saying that you know the project um, complies with all the development standards like FAR and lot coverage and height and so on are all within the maximums yep, permitted by the city's code. And in my experience, reviewing plans, which is 33 years of experience in the public sector uh, and working with both licensed architects and so-called designers, um, you know, to me, the design of a good uh, addition is as much art as it is science. And I found that if there's too much focus on the numbers, uh, to me, it's, it's like uh, baking a cake, if I can make another analogy. It's kind of like if you gave me a recipe and said, you know, put this much sugar, this much milk, this much flour, so on. And, you know, me 
my wife keeps me out of the kitchen for a good reason. Um, <laughs> try, tried to do that. Uh, there's no guarantee that that's going to come out, you know, a delicious, beautiful cake. Uh, same thing if if it's if the design's being driven by numerical standards, and that's why we have we need development standards like those. Don't get me wrong, but we also have design guidelines and standards, which tend to be yes, a little more subjective. And so, um, you know, that's why uh, that that's why I wanted to address that that statement. So, with that said, let me uh, get into some questions and comments on the elevations. And I'll begin with the side elevation on the south. Um, if I had to use one adjective to describe how that feels to me and how that looks to me, it would be jarring. Um, it's it's a jarring collision. Uh, it looks like a collision between a one-story house and a two-story house. Uh, the better additions that I've seen have some sort of elegant transition between the new and the old. Uh, and or they they take the approach of trying to put some of the new two-story floor area over the existing house so that it looks a little more organic. Um, and here again, the, the impression I get is just a mass butted up against a, a single family, a single story home. Um, another thing that I found troubling about that two-story mass on the side elevation, south elevation, is the monotonous window placement. One right over the other, exactly the same place, leaving to its right um, a very large void of blank wall space. And I know for a fact that our design guidelines caution against that uh, and counsel against that of having large areas of blank wall space. Um, and then with the balcony, uh, I was really puzzled why it needs to be so large. It's almost as if when designing this, you, you were taking an approach of, well, I can't let any space go unfilled. In fact, your FAR came out to 34.9. And I'm like, where's the other two square feet that would have got you to 35? Uh, it, it's like, you know, there's a space there. I've got to fill it with something. No, you don't. Uh, and you're not necessarily getting a better design by doing that. Um, again, if we look at the north side elevation and you look at the first floor uh, mass underneath the proposed balcony, again, blank wall space uh, all under there. And again, the same jarring uh, transition or lack thereof between the existing house and the new two-story mass. Uh, so those and and my colleague Vice Chair Lopez, I think, has already addressed one question I had about the plate height for the second floor and what we might be able to do about that. So um, those are my comments with regards to the elevations. And um, at this point, we can open the public hearing. And so I'll now open that public hearing and staff, are there any comments from the public on this item? We do not have or received um, any public comments in chambers. Attendees participating on Zoom, please click the high hand icon to make a public comment on item number four. And there are no um, public comments via Zoom. Okay, very well. Um, Mr. Rojas, uh, you'll be pleased to know that you have an opportunity to have a three-minute rebuttal to the comments and questions you've received from the commission. So would you like to take advantage of that, sir? Um, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, talk with the owners kind of thing and see, mm -hmm. and just kind of on the, on the balcony aspect, uh, the reason why it's so big is just mainly to uh, line up with the first story. And it's just from a structural engineering aspect. Mm -hmm. That's the, the main reason we decided to kind of push it out all the way. So mm -hmm. it's not, it didn't have anything to do with FAR or anything, just for an engineering standpoint, that was the idea. Uh, mm -hmm. to kind of push it out all the way. Okay. Uh, as far as the window placement on the south elevation, um, let's see, oh, the reason, the main reason, blank space, you have the stairs right there. Uh, it's a little dangerous to have stairs, um, a window right next to a stair, somebody falls, 
kind of just falls out of the window. Wouldn't that's that the have whole to reason. be? I'm sorry. Wouldn't that have to be tempered glass in a situation like that? It, correct. Yes, but it doesn't prevent from actually falling out of it if you stumble down the stairs. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we did not put any windows on that side. Got it. Um, the windows on the north side, uh, at least on the first floor. I, I see underneath the balcony. Yes, we can add a window there. Uh, just so we kind of avoid any blank space on the second edition. I mean, you have the closet there, so we didn't want to add any windows. You add windows to a closet space, you kind of eliminate um, closet space now. So there's a there's a window there. And that's why we actually, the window there in the second floor on the north elevation, just so it wouldn't be blank. Mm -hmm. But the idea of just not putting windows uh, in a closet, we didn't want to, it, it eliminates closet space. So mm -hmm. you kind of, it's the more efficient way. But uh, at least on the first floor, I can definitely add windows in that section. That is the bedroom side underneath the balcony. So that's not an issue. But at least that's the, uh, the approach we took for the balcony. It, it had absolutely nothing to do with FAR. Um, and then the windows on the south elevation, why there are no windows there. Okay. All right, very good. And you, you mentioned also, um, you know, that you would probably want to be uh, talking with your clients. So is it safe for me to assume that you're open to the idea of making revisions to the plan? That is absolutely correct, yes. Okay, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Mark, I have another question. Oh, so, I'm sorry, sorry Mr. Rojas. Uh, Vice Chair yes. Lopez has uh, another question. Yes, of course. Mr. Rojas, uh, I was kind of looking at the elevations also and looking between the north elevation and the rear elevation, and then looking the north elevation that you have a solid wall on the north elevation underneath the balcony. Correct. Correct. So, it's, and that's flush. Right, the the correct below the balcony is flush with the uh, this one, but the Cor south. I'm not sure that I understand the the rear east elevation uh, doesn't show that wall flush. That is correct. Yes, and so, the reason for that, we could not push out the porch any further because of clearance for the existing driveway. We needed that clearance. So, I. Uh, the what I'm trying to say is the east elevation and the north elevations do not match. And furthermore, uh, the floor plan, the, the proposed first floor plan, doesn't show the extended wall on on the north side. It does well. The proposed floor plan doesn't show the balcony, the the back patio. Uh, uh, it. Uh, yeah. It does. This is all inside. This is dining. No, and right, right here. Oh, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm looking. I'm, I. I apologize. I'm looking backwards. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry, sir. Fine. But but there is still a a a discrepancy between the east elevation and the north elevation. Uh, it shows if there's either we're missing a line or there's there's a bump out. Where does that bump out on the that you can see at the bottom the, right side of the east elevation? Where is that? It, it's 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 um since it's two D, it's kind of hard to to show one section being further back than the. But essentially, okay, on the on the east elevation, right uh -huh. where the 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 column is, right on the right, that is the that will be the new proposed wall for the bedroom. That's essentially where the bump is, like the balcony is pushed in and essentially lining up to the proposed patio on the bottom and the, again the reason for that was for clearance for a vehicle for the garage at the rear the so driveway are you, are you saying that the east elevation that i'm looking at is incorrect uh, can you can you show it up on your screen because at least i'm looking Raulio, at you can you ones. put it up on the screen thank you oh uh, god i cannot see that <laughs> Okay, oh, here on the, the right side, you see how the upstairs, it, there's a line, the exterior wall on the upstairs, and then there's a, a little bit of a roof and it, it's further, I mean, to the right, I guess, on this drawing. And, and you see what I'm saying? 
Uh, can you can you say that one more time? Are oh, we looking at Braulio, the, you, the east, you, right? Braulio, can you point to the little roof that's between the second floor and the first floor? Oh, through the zoom, uh, you actually can't see the TVs. Um, but, oh, oh, okay. So are you trying? Are you trying to say that bedroom three looks like it goes beyond? Well, something this, goes beyond, yeah. and the window is in between. It's it's yeah. The it's window is the further width of the 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 rest of the house. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it looks like. Because you'll notice uh, when we look at the proposed first floor plan, it's These is all flush. yeah, the, so the width, no the so width is 35.4 and the second floor is 32.4. So that oh. pops out an additional three. Feet. Okay, so then which the one that's wrong is the is the north elevation. The north elevation does not show the roof. That's where it is underneath the proposed balcony. That's oh, that's what exactly right. is going on. Yeah, because there is an indent um, to the second floor. That is correct. Uh, and so, uh, so is the Raleigh, north elevation that's wrong? Correct. Yes, there is missing uh, the roof right underneath the balcony. Essentially, the the entire span kind of thing. There should be a a tiny roof as shown on the um, on okay. the east elevation. Correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yes, there we go. Okay. Okay. So since we're talking about that step that you did from the second floor to the first floor, I think one comment, a way to to resolve one of the comments that, that the uh, chairman had for you today is that you should consider doing the same thing on, on the south side. Oh, that's where the stairs are. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I understand that you, there is some work to be done. I'm just saying that that articulation helps the design. So that I think, and I think if I, I remember Chairman uh, talking about it, that, 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 that wall, the way it worked was a little jarring, I think is the word you use. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's just one way to solve that issue. I understand there is some logistics behind it. And, and let me add, Mr. Rojas, also, I, I respect and appreciate your comment regarding placement of windows in the stairwell as a possible safety hazard, but there's also ways to introduce fenestration in that blank wall through things like a clear story window that you know would help to break up that blank uh, space uh, and, and be in a position in the stairwell where Nobody's going to fall through it because it's above their head. Kind of high, uh, high up, yeah. yeah. Kind of lined up with the with the second story window, and it kind of doesn't. Sure. Yeah. No. That 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 is definitely something. Uh, I believe actually the owners are on this Zoom meeting. Well, they're uh, actually so, here sitting in front of us. I believe. I, no, no, they're they're oh, they're in they're in India. Oh, I'm the sorry. <laughs> they're they're our next item. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's all the questions I have. Okay. Okay. Noted. All right. Um, so at this time, uh, we had no public comment. So we'll move into discussion among the commissioners. And who would like to start off? I can go ahead. Well, I mean, Commissioner Dang, I, I think everyone's provided really good feedback. And having done this myself, um, I, I would say that there probably needs to be something about the width of the second floor, the plate height of the second floor, and the transition on the uh, north and south plane of the house. I, I, I just feel like that's where it's going to end up, but I don't want to, you know, direct their design, but right. I just feel like having gone through this process and going through a subcommittee, that's probably the likely scenario. So mm -hmm. um, I want to just put that out there to, to help guide them as they go mm -hmm. through this process. Right. right. That sounds accurate. Yes. No, very much yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jeremy, you, one of the things you mentioned was the transition on the north and south elevations, and I'm curious how the other commissioners feel about uh, not only that, but also the change in materials from wood siding to stucco. You know, we we require differentiation yeah. between the old and the new uh, parts of the project, and that different, differentiation can be... Uh, I don't want to use jarring. I've already used that word tonight. It can be uh, pronounced uh, or it can be subtle. And I think to my eyes, this is a rather pronounced break between the existing and the um, and the proposed materials, which may be OK. I just I'm just curious how my fellow commissioners feel about that. 
And and I would uh, I would turn to my respected colleague, our only architect on the commission, uh, Vice Chair Lopez, for any help that you might be able to give the applicants in that regard, because um, I I've struggled to even describe the existing roof. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. I know a hip roof when I see it. But yeah. I well, I uh, so I, I I might be repeating so, some of the things we have already talked about, but I I want to be so that. We don't go to the end, and then we have to go backwards. So, if you, Mr. Rojas, if you don't mind taking some notes, that that would be great. Uh, uh, I I think the the it's it's close. It's 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 very close. The location of the second floor is 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 probably where we would uh, prefer uh, for you to to do the work. So, in that regard, is good. Uh, so, but the problem that we we have a few problems. One of them is that the subservient nature of the or the lack of subservient nature of the addition. So the addition kind of calls attention to itself more than the existing house, and that might be exas exacerbated by the fact that we don't have three D model, we don't have a three D drawing, and we don't have a a, vis a visual. Uh, the vision from you know the through the in section to kind of see the vision on how uh, the viewpoints I guess is what we were calling it earlier today. So uh, so those I think I would encourage you to to add uh, first of all of course uh, do accurate drawings. Uh, we need to have accurate drawings and it, our job should not be kind of trying to find discrepancies on the drawings. So I, I think we it's very important for you to kind of prepare accurate drawings. Uh, so so the the size and the scale of the addition, uh, also the nine foot, uh, so we need obviously it, it's it wants to come down because that's part of the reason why it's so jarring or it seems that jarring. So so it needs to come down. I think nine feet for the second floor is is a it's a bit excessive. So you have a little bit of play for that floor plate to come down a little bit. You can also change the roof uh, angle a little bit. I, I guess I prefer for the angle to be a little more shallow than the existing and can get the, 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 the design down and make it a little more subtle. Uh, the material in, in terms of the siding, well, the roofing and the siding are, to me are the same problem, which is, we have to dance this dance between uh, 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 um, there's the phrase that is compatible yet differentiated. Yeah, and that is has 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 uh, gray has a has a has a gray area gets right. So so I would say this is too far in the differentiated and and it needs to come closer to the compatible. And by that I mean I think it's it's, it's very stark the the stucco to to wood siding. So and if that was a concept and it would be carried through the design, I would agree with that. But the design is trying to match the existing, which is what we would prefer for you to do. So then I think a more subtle a more subtle uh, solution might be better. A more subtle differentiation between the wood siding. And the stucco, and in the in the same realm is the roofing. The roofing actually bothers me more because you will definitely see this roofing, and you will know that it's very different from the other one. So, uh, although it, it probably in tone, in color tone, might be similar, the materiality of it is very, very different and very obvious. So, those are two things that. Uh, I think you can you can play with. Uh, certainly, the the balcony seems to be excessively big. Uh, the railings are not uh, are not shown uh, with enough information. 
uh, and the articulation on the uh, south side uh, could could be more 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 elegant. I think that was a very very good way to describe it. it the the articulation could be a little bit more elegant rather than than just kind of uh, match flush the one wall with the other wall, uh, which is where I was saying that maybe the 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 way the second floor uh, in, uh, 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 steps back from the elevation on on the uh, on the north side maybe that's one way to do it. There's not it's not the only way to do it. You you can create a a a an, an indentation between existing and proposed. That is a vertical indentation. There's there's different ways to do that, but I think something could be improved in in that uh, realm. So uh, I think that's all I have. Uh, I, I, and I you know I think it's it, we we've been talking about it for a while now that uh, and I'm not sure that it gets to the the uh, owners and and designer is that. When it comes to a two-story addition, we really need to do a three-dimensional model, uh, either a physical model, three-dimensional model, and the view, the view uh, studies are also very important. I think they would have helped you today, to be honest. Uh, so I don't think you're that far. It's just a little bit of articulation and, and work, and, and I think it could, it could work. Thank you, Vice Chair Lopez. You know, my next question to the commission would be, we've given Mr. Rojas and his client some fairly specific guidance tonight uh, and some fairly clear, I hope clear, <laughs> instruction or articulation of our concerns about the proposed design. Do you feel that that's sufficient or is this a project that would be, that would benefit from having a subcommittee? Are you asking me? I'm asking everyone. Oh, everyone. Mm -hmm. I thought you were. Uh, uh, it could go either way, really. I mean, uh, I think, I mean, Mr. Rojas, how, how uh, do you have any questions about the comments you've heard today? Scared him off. Oh, are you? Can you hear me, Mr. Hello? Rojas? Oh, hey, Alan. Oh. There we go. Okay. Do you have any questions about the comments you've heard today? So the the only thing is the the stucco. We actually took inspiration um, from various houses in South Pass that that appears to be very common. They have siding, and just across the street, actually, from 1808 Diamond, that's exactly how it is. Uh, they have siding on the first floor. Second floor is clearly an addition. Addition is stucco. So that's kind of where we took inspiration. Our original was um, to match siding with siding. But when we saw the, it, it's a, a lot of homes actually in South Pass that that appears to be the, the exact same thing everywhere. So that's well, the only reason. Yes, go ahead. You, you, have, you have just described something that is not what you are proposing, right? You, you, are, you are proposing stucco first floor and second floor so the the siding ends and the stucco uh, begins and they touch each other right so what what you just described that you've seen in other examples if i understood you is that the siding on the first floor continues and then it, the second floor is stucco is that correct oh uh, i never actually noticed the first floor all being you can just see that at least the second floor from the street is stucco so it kind of I guess I would just assume that the entire addition would be ah. one type of material. But again, yeah, you're probably right. I, I've never noticed the first floor of the new addition. Just from a street point of view, you can see that the new portion. That's the only reason we decided to go with this um, with this approach. Because if you, I would be much more open to what you described being that the first floor remains uh, differentiated yet more subtle with the siding and having the second floor be stucco because that could work with the idea that you're also indent, uh, uh, indent on one Correct. side, maybe doing another articulation on the opposite. I think that there is something there that kind of works. 
Yeah, there is something. Yeah. No, yeah, that is great. Yeah, I would, I would add, Mr. Rojas, also, uh, you know, I think you're correct that if you drive around town, you, you can certainly find examples of homes where at least one side may be a combination of siding and stucco. And there's nothing wrong with that inherently from a design standpoint. I think where it goes south, so to speak, is when uh, there, there's a lack of transition, transitional elements between the two materials. So uh, if you had, for example, a stucco wall butted up right against a, uh, a wall covered in siding, but you didn't have any sort of a vertical trim element to delineate or um, demarcate the, the difference between the two materials. Uh, so I think that uh, some of the things Vice Chair Lopez said uh, are in that vein um, to think about in terms of how do you incorporate transitional elements so that it looks um, pleasing to the eye and, and not jarring? And I think also finally, uh, we're talking about transitions between the one story and the two story, but also within your two story mass, um, there are things like introduction of a belt course in the stucco between the first and second floor that would help to break up the monotony uh, and uh, mass of the blank walls. Uh, and then as we've discussed previously about the additional windows uh, in the stairwell area. So um, again, I'll, I'll ask the question of my colleagues. Um, do you feel we've given Mr. Rojas and his client sufficient direction or was this a project where you would recommend we form a subcommittee? And at this point, what I would say is if uh, Mr. Rojas, if you feel how I would ask you, if you feel uh, that you've heard the, uh, the comments and you are and you uh, can you would like to take a pass at it or we can meet and, 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 and give you some more guidance if you want. We're kind of open to listen to hear what you have to say. Well, you guys have definitely given me. Um... A lot of guidance actually today. Um, I'm actually really glad I'm here. Um, and your comments are very well noted. Um, like, I, I see absolutely nothing wrong with, with the comments you guys give. I understand the transition. Yes, it is, uh, as you say, jarring to see um, just a huge wall kind of thing. Um, roofing material makes sense. Uh, I, I understand the, the whole plate height too, because essentially we want to drop that second floor so it doesn't stand out. That makes perfect sense. I feel like um, you guys have given me a lot of good advice and I mean, yeah. Okay, so based on that, I think we we don't think to, that we need to do a subcommittee, it seems to me. It, it doesn't appear that way. And, and uh, Lord knows I would not wanna be the one that would um, burden this project with additional uh, you know, time involved. Right. Uh, we'd like to get to yes as soon as possible. Um, let me just ask staff, Braulio, um, are you uh, confident that you got everything? Well, you've got the recording as well to refer to. So uh, <laughs> you've got all of our, our comments down. Okay. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I have uh, written down all the comments provided by the commission tonight. And uh, in the resubmittal of the uh, application, staff can look at it to make sure that these comments were addressed. Um, I will say that if, if since there is a, uh, a property owner involved, they may not be able to agree to all of your comments. Absolutely. And so there sure. might not be full changes. Right. Um, I, I believe that maybe a subcommittee might be better to give a final approval um, in efforts to alleviate that time from the applicant having to come back with something that might not necessarily match all the comments, but was agreed upon with the property owner. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morris? I feel like in this, I mean, I appreciate that, but I feel like in this instance, we could make a motion that, that describe the four major areas that we've been talking about and give him a month to continue this to the next um, meeting, give him a month to look at this, have him come back, perhaps in person if he's free. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, uh, Braulio, I, I appreciate uh, your comment, but since we had the discussion with Mr. Rojas, I think we feel, I feel pretty good that, uh, that we made some good progress. Oh, so, hello, thank hello. You. 
Can I can I just say something real quick? Of course. I, I'm actually um, speaking with the owners right now, and mm. uh, the owners are, are listening in. I don't I don't think they can chat right now, but uh, they just said they agree to any and all comments. So all the comments they're they're listening to everything, and they just they just sent me a text and said we agree to the comments. So well, there shouldn't be any issue as far as the the owner standpoint. Perfect. Great. If you would please relay to them our thanks and appreciation for that and their willingness to be flexible uh, as we work towards a common solution. So, yes. um, Chris, you just said something a moment ago that sounded pretty much like a motion to me. Would you like to restate that in the form of a motion? I would make a motion that based on these comments that we have made tonight, we continue this item to the next scheduled Cultural Heritage Commission meeting, which is August. sometime in August, yeah. um, to give the applicant and the architect a chance to look at our comments and make some changes to the addition and the house and come back to us um, at that meeting. Um, I'll, I'll second and just add one thing that we request um, there be some form of 3D modeling where we can get a better oh, yeah, idea. Mr. Mr. Rojas, how do you feel about that? Is that okay? Uh, that is something I personally don't do, uh, but it can be done. Thank you. No, we need it. Sorry. Yes. Uh, no. Well, it doesn't. Uh, the yeah. line of sight is not. I mean, a full three D model is, but if you're just looking at the like the one side view, that can be done, right? The line of sight is might be very different from that yeah. line of sight. The, the programs, right, Chris, have gotten really sophisticated. I'm very, uh, you know. I'm sorry, Mr. Ross. The part of that motion is when you come back with a redesign to do the best you can to show us something that looks like 3D dimensional. I, I, the expense of a model is a lot, I would get, but line of sight or something that would help us approve this the next month. Okay. The next Sounds, no, no, yeah, I, I understand kind of thing. Doesn't essentially have to be a 3D rendering, but yes. something close to it, right? Is that is that what I'm... Is that, exactly, yes. Yes. Yes, we, uh, no emphasis on the... On the fine details and everything else. It's more of a massing 3D model because that's basically what we want to see is just the mass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. And uh, I will ask staff to please take the roll call. Commissioner Cross? Yes. Commission? Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry for clarification. I just want to state that the motion was to continue to the CHC meeting of August 17th, 2023. <laughs> I'm sorry, staff, please proceed. <laughs> Commissioner Cross? Yes. Commissioner Morish? Commissioner Ding? Yes. Vice Chair Lopez? Yes. Chair Gallatin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, uh, we're now ready for our second public hearing tonight. This case is at 329 Fremont Avenue. It's project number 2552-COA and it's a certificate of appropriateness for a 400 square foot first floor addition at the rear of an existing two-story, 1,912 square foot single family residence. And to present the staff report, we have Assistant Planner Mackenzie Goldberg. Thank you. Uh, as mentioned, I will be presenting agenda item five um, for the project located at 329 Fremont Avenue. That's project number 2552-COA. The subject site is a rectangular shaped lot located on the westerly side of Fremont Avenue. The lot size is approximately 10,586 square feet and it is in the res residential estate zone and is surrounded by one to two story residential uses. The subject site is currently improved with a 1,912 square foot two story resident residence, a 460 square foot guest house, and a 380 square foot garage. The primary residence was built in 1901 and is listed as late colonial revival architectural style. Character defining features include the side gabled roof, gabled dormers, and uh, the brick facade and chimney among other features. The property is a contributor to an eligible district that is identified in the city's 2002 survey. The district is comprised of 58 contributing resources built in a variety of architectural styles with a period of significance from 1907 to 1949. 
The applicants are proposing to add a 400 square foot first floor addition at the rear of the existing primary residence, which will allow for a new primary bedroom and bath. Here is the existing and proposed site plan. The um, proposed addition is what is highlighted in blue. Here is the existing first floor plan. Here is a proposed first floor plan. All work is being proposed um, located at the rear. Here is the front elevation. The only proposed work to this facade is a change out of the window that is outlined in blue. I also wanna note that that portion of the property is not visible from the street due to an existing wall and gate. Here is the existing north side elevation. Here is the proposed north side elevation showing the rear addition once again highlighted in blue. Here is the existing south side elevation. Here is the existing proposed, sorry, here is the proposed south side elevation also showing the addition in blue. Here is the rear elevation. Here is a proposed rear addition showing the first floor addition with a front facing gable. The existing bay window is to be reused and the applicant is also proposing a brick clad porch entry. Here is the existing and proposed roof plan. Staff recommends that the Cultural Heritage Commission approve the project subject to the conditions of approval. Thank you. Thank staff. you. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for staff? I'll start with uh, Commissioner Morish. Okay. Vice Chair Lopez. No questions. Commissioner Cross. No questions. And Commissioner Ding. No. And I have no questions. Um, I'm sorry. Did you say the applicant had a presentation for us? Oh, sorry. Um, the applicant is here as well as the property owner. They do not have a presentation, but they're available for questions. Very good. All right. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Okay. Seeing none. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I have one question for the uh, project architect or designer, um, and that has to do with the new windows that are being proposed. Um, they are described as simulated divided light, uh, and looking at the Anderson website, uh, they have no spacer in between. The Anderson 100 series also makes uh, a uh, full uh, full divided light window that has a black spacer. Uh, would you be willing to change to call out that model instead? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> and if you could please identify yourself. Hi, I'm Kristen Boyle. I'm the designer of the project. Um, and the existing windows mm -hmm. in the, um, the rest of the first floor and the second floor mm -hmm. all already are this model. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. But, um, you know, if, yeah. So then they would match with the. Uh, well, I, I, another thing I want to mention, I appreciate your reuse of the existing windows wherever possible. That's always something we encourage from a preservation standpoint. Thank you. Yeah. Question. I'm looking again at the windows and I think some of them are simulated, just glued on. They're glued, the yes, but they don't have that um, gap like the, the existing yeah. ones. So, I know. You want to keep them? Really? Well, the because, those are, because those are single glazed, right? And your new windows are double, double glazed. So they're. No, the, the, the current ones are the ones that were matching our yeah. dual pane. Oh. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'll now open the public hearing on this item and ask staff, were there any public comments received? There were no uh, public comments received um, in chambers. Attendees participating on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make public comment on item number five. 
and we do not have any public comments via Zoom. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, applicant, you have the opportunity for a three minute rebuttal if you choose to take it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was a tough question there on the window. But, uh, if you choose to pass, that's okay too. Um, so let's uh, have commission discussion. Um, I, I will start it off by saying I have, I have nothing further to say. I think it's a really uh, well done project. Um, you know, it's a good example of uh, compliance with all of our standards, both the design standards and the Secretary of Interior standards. So I have no, no quarrel with this one whatsoever. I don't either. I was loving everything about it until I realized that those were not true divided like wood windows. Um, but having said that, it, it is a great, it's a, it's a perfectly appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other comments? No comments here. Okay. No other comments. Okay. No, it's, it's very nice. It's properly, is 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 properly cited. It's in the right location. Is the right scale. Is the right height. Is so. It's is it's, it's, it's what, like the commissioner said. It's exactly what we're looking for. And since it's in the back, I can let go of the window. Yeah. So okay. we're good. Thank you. All right. Would uh, someone then like to make a motion on this? I move that we approve the uh, project as proposed with the conditions and findings as presented in the staff report. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion and second. Staff, would you please take the roll? Commissioner Cross? Yes. Commissioner Morish? Commissioner Ding? Yes. Vice Chair Lopez? Yes. And Chair Gallatin? Yes. Motion carries. Congratulations, your project is approved. Well done, guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. Okay, now is the time on our agenda for comments from our city council liaison. So I turn to Mayor Pro Ten Snymer to see if you have anything to share with the commission tonight. Well, I have none. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what time did it end, Evelyn? One fifty. Good Lord. Hi. Wow. Lead it. Yeah. Hi, really. Yeah. Okay. We had thirty-one items. I know. Like Close session. We have like seven. Yeah. Oh. Good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we appreciate your endurance. Yeah. All right. All right. Comments from commissioners. Um, start with Commissioner Cross. Anything to share? Nothing. Okay, Commissioner Morish. Nothing. Vice Chair Lopez. Uh, so what do we have to do to get these view lines and 3D models as requirements for second story addition? Mm -hmm. Officially. Can you like to fix something that doesn't work? It isn't a 3D model that we could put in the... I well, it, well it, it, I think Rat maybe, and uh, I would welcome any input from uh, Ms. Becker, who's sitting patiently out there in the audience. But I think the way I would suggest is rather than suggest the mechanism and say it must be a 3D model, uh, suggest and clearly state what it is we're trying to represent, what it is we're trying to see. I mean, you know, and if. Is it I think it needs to be both, but I'll take a side, a line of sight better than nothing. What, what, so, side? so I, I, I'm my own guy. So I, my office is just me, uh, and I have enough time to actually build a very crude, digital model on my own. It it takes me a day or two. A digital three D model. A digital digital three D model. Uh, no, if it was going to be a, a physical model, it would take me longer. So, I, oh no, I'm saying three digital. I, 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 that's what I meant. Because yeah. most guys can do this on whatever they can. Whatever Correct. So, CAD is almost already three dimensions at yeah. many times. So, it's really very easy. So, I, that's what I would like because a digital three model, and I would like go further and say that we need to see the blocks of the houses each on each side. Mm. But I, I, I'll take what I can get, you know? <laughs> But yeah, it, 
I don't think it's that expensive. My architect did it for us and he was basically just like, don't worry about it. It wasn't like a huge additional cost. I think he just had someone do it based off so the I, AutoCAD file. In my point of view, I think if we require it and wait for the applicant to, if, if they have a comment about it or whatever they want to say, I'm willing to listen, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not forcing it, but if it's not on the requirement, then they don't do it, right? Right. Like the railing, the railing should be something that it, that's that's a, an architectural element that should be detailed and and shown. So but I think the most important thing is it actually helps them. Yeah, because like for my house, I, I, think I, so. I have a three foot retaining wall. My house is on top of that. So if you look at the elevation, it looks like this big yeah. huge thing. But when you're standing on the street, you have a retaining wall. You have the first story, and you have the second story that's like sloped down. And so without the three D model, it actually just looks much larger. Yeah, no, I get that it would help them, but I don't know how much. Well, anyway, She's here. <laughs> this is Allison Becker. I'm I'm just listening. I mean, I I don't. Um, I agree that more information is always better, right? I think uh, we're we're striving to run efficient meetings and and help move projects forward. So to that end, anything that can be presented, you know, to inform and facilitate decision making, I think we should explore. Um, and I do agree that these days, 3D modeling is a lot easier. Um, I mean, we have ambitions internally to be able to have SketchUp and other tools that could easily help us illustrate. So. It's not an unreasonable request. Um, it is not currently something that we ask for. And so maybe the commission can think about under what circumstances it would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. I mean, particularly in the short time that I've been with you, um, there have been a number of second store um, rear additions with two stories that have, you know, uh, raised considerable uh, concerns. Maybe that's a, a set of circumstances where we could automatically ask. Um, so, so then. So what I would say is that very specifically for projects that are a one story project and they're adding a second story, we need those for sure. Now, if you have a two story addition and you're adding to that, well, I can see where the roof of the existing is and then I can see what the massing is. So I would be more flexible about that. Although I still, uh, anyway, I think very specifically yes. for going from one story to two yes. should have it. Has a minimum. Done. Okay, great. Me, when I presented a project like this, I knew that was going to be an issue. So I, I tried to go out of my way to actually show as much as possible. And the, the Milan project that I did, you can barely see it from the front. So yeah. I am not happy yeah. that I lower it because it doesn't need to be lowered, but <laughs> that's okay. I did. So anyway, that's things that. It's not that. Okay, thank you, Allison. Uh, any other comments from commissioners? No? Any comments from subcommittees? We've been quiet. No? We haven't heard anything on Wayne at all. No. We did a right. It's uh, It's been continued to yes. indefinite, an indefinite day, yeah, right? So <laughs> they're probably revisiting some things. Could yes. be. Yeah. Okay. Um, Allison, any comments from staff? Just a few things. Um, uh, wanted to alert you all to the fact that this week, yesterday, I believe we welcomed Dean Flores, who is our new senior planner, um, who will soon be presenting in front of you and others. Um, he comes from Rolling Hill Estates um, as an as an uh, associate planner. And um, he's fitting right in. Um, I immediately commandeered him to help with our general plan and specific plan update. 
So uh, he'll be, you'll see him soon in front of city council. Um, in that arena, um, as of Monday, our uh, draft program EIR will hit the streets um, and we're going to be um, advancing the plans and all of the corresponding uh, rezonings uh, through the planning commission next month. There'll be two meetings uh, on the 8th and the 21st. Uh, we're certain that we have quorum for both of those meetings. Um, and then uh, we'll shortly be setting the hearings uh, for council in September. Um, I hope you all have received my email inviting you to review the plans. Um, honestly, your uh, comments and suggestions would be welcome. Uh, so um, we are running a trundicated process and, and that's uh, challenging. Um, but, you know, here we are. So onward. Thank you. Allison, I just had a follow up question to the general plan update. Uh, when I attended the workshop that was held, I think it was last month on a Saturday at the War Memorial Building, um, a resident brought up uh, a question about whether there could be a study session on the issue of uh, height limit, the 45 foot height limit. Has there been any progress towards scheduling that? No. Um... In the end, the city attorney has advised that our plans adhere to the 45 foot height limit mm -hmm. um, and that in the event that a uh, voter, um, a ballot measure is approved by the voters that we would return with a um, an amendment mm -hmm. to the specific plan or general plan. Okay. Um, you know, in full disclosure, that does not preclude an applicant who is providing um, affordable housing on site sure. from exercising density bonus incentives, which would allow them under that circumstance to exceed the height limit. Mm -hmm. But for the moment, that um, that seemed like the best approach mm -hmm to um, uh, to facilitate the processing of the uh, the plans right. and um, you know provide ample opportunity for the question of height to be vetted uh, more broadly over the next year. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, well, if there's nothing further, um, I will move that we adjourn to our next regular meeting, which is on Thursday, August 17th at 6 30 p.m. Okay. So moved. So moved. <laughs> Hearing no objection. <laughs>